You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hey there, welcome to episode 305 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey everybody, it's Sean back at you with another exciting episode of the Soul Forge. And with me, like usual, is Leah. Hi. And today we have making his podcast debut. Hi, my name is Wyatt. And how do we know Wyatt? Wyatt's my son. Ah, uh, very good. Yeah. Very good. How do you feel about making your podcast debut? Are you excited? Are you thrilled? Are you raring to go? All of the above, I guess. I, I can tell. I can tell. Okay, so this week we're going to be talking about Five Nights at Freddy's. We're going to talk about the uh, the game franchise. And then, after a bit of a break, we're going to go see the film and then come back with our immediate reactions. Mm -hmm. But before we get into all that, Leah. Yeah. What have we been up to lately? Cooking. We've been doing a lot of cooking. We certainly um, have. I love it when I get to make something that my family really enjoys and maybe something that I've seen before. Um, as Wyatt knows, I've been doing this for a long time where I find a recipe and I sort of make my family the guinea pig uh, as to whether or not it's good. And then if it is good, I, I sort of hang on to the recipe and make it over and over again, sort of make it part of our regular routine. Um, if the family doesn't like it, then I kind of just lose the recipe and try something else. So we tried something in Disneyland, mm -hmm. Disney World, Disney D World, Disney World, mm -hmm. and it was good and it was expensive and we thought we could replicate it here. So we tried it. Yeah. And how did that turn out? So the listeners might remember we went live when we were there and we actually tried this particular snack live on the, uh, on the Soul Forge page and uh, they were cheeseburger spring rolls. It's a little cart just outside of Adventureland in Magic Kingdom. You can get two of them for... I think it was, was like it? 10, 10 bucks, bucks or something. Yeah, it was it was quite expensive. Um, but we were manage, we, we did manage to replicate them uh, in our own kitchen, and it was really fun. You and I cooked them together. We did. Mm -hmm. We followed the recipe. We tweaked it a little bit. I think they were better than what we had at the park. I, I would have to agree. I think uh, they did lack a little bit more cheese. So we were actually thinking maybe adding more cheese to the recipe or maybe a more harsher cheese or maybe even some queso on the side for dipping. That would be good. Yeah. That would be good because yeah. it was our first time making it. Yeah, but it turned out great. It turned out fantastic. And even the leftovers actually, when you cook them the next day, you know, reheated, um, I didn't find that it was that bad after a day or two either. So... No, no. And Wyatt, you had some? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What did you think of it? <clears throat> they were good, yeah. Good. So that's a seal of approval right there. It didn't take us very long either, really. It wasn't a lengthy process to make them. No, not at all. Yeah. Nope. Just followed the recipe and deep fried them on the stove mm -hmm. and it was it was good. Yeah, it was good. I imagine you can make them in an air fryer as well, but oh, we followed the recipe, filled up our cast iron pan uh with oil and just deep fried them that way and it was it was delicious and they tasted like more yes they sure did they definitely did they had a really nice crunch to them yes that usually ends up going away the next day with leftovers True. but i still found that i had that not as much obviously but i still got that crunch the next day which oh yeah was awesome. yeah they're still good yeah. yep definitely mm -hmm. so we'll definitely make them again and probably add more cheese mm-hmm and in other news, we've been continuing on with our uh, BritBox watching, and uh, we're watching yes. more Keeping Up Appearances. Yes. Uh, we watched four episodes of Blake 7, mm -hmm. which uh, my good buddy Paul from uh, my other podcasts, uh, Epsilon 3 and Cosmo Pizza, said, oh yeah, it's a really good show. And I talked to him yesterday, and he said, uh, well, I hadn't watched it since the 70s. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's very cheesy. It's very cheesy. It's not good. No. It, it's entertaining. Sure. In, in a retro sci-fi from the 70s kind of way. Definitely. Very British. Yes. And you could tell they didn't have a lot of budget. Yeah, you can very much so tell that. Yeah. yeah. 
And it's not something that you can binge because it's not easy to watch. No, it's really not. And you can tell it's an older show, you know, with all the special, quote unquote, special effects That's and right. that type of thing. They weren't very special. No. No. And uh, in other news, uh, on the Hot Wheels front, I, I did manage to get most of the things that I need. I got the paint stripper. Yes. Uh, it, it took about 48 hours for the, the stripper to work. Okay. And... I probably could have done it in 24, but uh, I, I still need to get pliers and uh, I need to get a, a rotary tool with the metal polisher before I paint or anything. Okay. Um, sure. the, the, the main thing was drilling out the rivets mm -hmm. and I screwed up two cars oh, that oh. I didn't care about mm -hmm. uh, just to give it a try and practice it out. Right. And then on the third car, I figured it out finally. Okay. So good. Uh, yeah. that's as far as I've gotten so far. Excellent. But okay. what the listeners really want to know is what is this Five Nights at Freddy's stuff? Now, you guys have been obsessed with this since I came around the last five or six months. Yeah. And you've been watching YouTube videos about it and all kinds of stuff, which reminds me of my obsession with uh, Star Trek movies when they were coming out. Yeah. Uh, so tell me about Five Nights at Freddy's. So Wyatt actually started playing this game a long time ago. I get little snippets here and there, and it, it is quite a popular video game. Uh, the first one was released when, Wyatt? 2014. Okay, so 2014 was the very first Five Nights at Freddy's? I believe so, yes. Okay. There's quite a few debates about the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's, and the creator hasn't really divulged too much. No, he likes to keep things hidden, but not hiding away. He likes to add small snippets of stuff here and there to keep the audience entertained and trying to look deeper but never give them that final piece so like breadcrumbs yeah mm -hmm. okay okay well why don't you tell the listeners what this whole franchise of video games is about i guess the best way to start would be with the first game the first game entitled five nights at freddy's was created by scott cawthon in 2014 after he had made games previously and Unfortunately, they had never kicked off in the way that he had wanted, so this was supposed to be his last game. He decided that he was going to make a Chuck E. Cheese-style restaurant, and there are theories that the story of the game was based off of a real-life series of murders in a real-life Chuck E. Cheese restaurant. But those are just theories. We don't really have any evidence from him directly. So Five Nights at Freddy's was a horror game where you would play as a security guard in this old, like I said, Chuck E. Cheese style restaurant and the animatronics would come to kill you. They would come to your office and it, when it was released originally, it was picked up by a few popular influ influencers on YouTube and other platforms. They would play it and edit a video around it and then post it and that eventually got the attention of more people who would then play it and it just kind of snowballed from there. So as for video game uh, play dynamics, what do you actually do in the game? Um, not much actually. So you said the, the, the main idea is that you're a security guard in a Chuck E. Cheese style restaurant. So what kind of things did happen or would have happened in this environment. So was there games um, and pizza parties, that type of thing uh, in this restaurant? And you were there for the day shift or the night shift? You were there for the night shift. Okay. And it was a smaller attraction, I guess. There was a few small party rooms and then there was one big room in the center mm -hmm. with an animatronic band who would play music for the kids and serve pizza and etc. Okay, so who's Freddy? Freddy is the lead of the band. Okay, and so he's a bear? Yes. Because uh, uh, I've heard you say Freddy Fazbear. Yes. yes. So he's the bear. Um, and the other main characters uh, is Chica, and she's yes. a chicken? Yes. Okay, so there's uh, Freddy Fazbear, the bear, Chica, the chicken, yes. Bonnie, the bunny, yes, and Foxy, the fox. Pirate fox. Pirate fox. What's okay. A, what's a pirate fox? It's a fox who is a pirate. Okay. That's <laughs> pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So 
I've, I've been watching these YouTube videos with you guys, the, mm-hmm. the breakdowns, the analysis, the final trailer, the next final trailer, the second and the third and the fourth final trailer, because there's so many final trailers. Yes. And, and, and basically it's got uh, Josh Hutcherson and he's, he's the night shift guy. And uh, there's a bunch of, what would you call them, haunted animatronics? So Possessed, haunted? Yeah. So in order to actually answer that question, we kind of have to go back to the games a little bit because yeah. there is, uh, how many... Um, versions so there's one two three and four and then sister locations or how many oh how um, many games do they have in 2014 there was the first one five nights at freddy's which Mm -hmm. spawned five nights at freddy's Mm two then five nights at freddy's three was originally supposed to be the end it was supposed to be a trilogy but the games were so popular that he it seems he decided to make another one and that other one would be Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Okay. And that was also supposed to be the end. And then in between Five Nights at Freddy's 4 and, like you mentioned, Five Nights at Freddy's sister location, there was a game that not a lot of people enjoyed at the time called Five Nights at Freddy's World, mm-hmm. which was, unlike the other games, it wasn't really a horror game. It was a third-person RPG, kind of like Pokemon-style game. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, there was also some uh, geared towards simply the Oculus, uh, I think it was, or the VR uh, yeah. area. Uh, so that's uh, Help Wanted? Yes. Help Wanted was originally released for the PlayStation VR, I believe. Okay. And it eventually made its way to other places like the Oculus. Now, I guess they're Meta Quest now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and is there Help Wanted 2? Uh, Help Wanted 2 is coming out okay. soon, actually. Coming out soon. Okay, and then there's also Security Breach. Yes. And Ruin. Yeah, Ruin isn't really its own game. It's DLC, downloadable content for mm-hmm. Security Breach. So I guess the whole list of the games would be 1, 2, 3, 4, World, Sister Location. Then there was 6, which had an alternate title. Uh, pizzeria simulator Mm -hmm. there was um, some offshoot games i think one of them was uh, fury's rage and there was uh, freddy in space which eventually got a freddy in space 2 not too long ago and the big newest one was security breach which showed or had scott kind of take a bit of a backseat from being the lead and he let this company who he's passing the franchise over to uh, Steel Wool Studios do a bit more with. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Security Breach is the newest one, but Ruin was kind of the main topic for a little while recently because Ruin had come out not too long ago. It followed uh, a new character in the same setting. Okay. Um, And, you know, we want to talk a little bit about lore. So what's the, the movie and sort of the video games, from what I can gather, is based on... Uh, one, two, and three. I would disagree with you there. I would say it's more one specifically. Okay. Because you were saying they're going to make a trilogy of these movies? Yeah, it's rumored. I think the evidence that people have for that is, um, what's his name? He played Shaggy. Matthew Lillard. Matthew Lillard, that's it. Yeah. He said that he was signed on for three movies mm-hmm. in this franchise, which... You know, the other two may never see the light of day, depending on how well this movie does and other right. situations. Standard contract. Right. right. Three-picture yeah. deal. Yeah. Whether it happens or not. Right. So, so Matthew Lillard is rumored to play Steve Ranglin or William Afton. We're not really sure yet. Um, so where the sort of the general idea of Five Nights at Freddy's comes in is that these four animatronics that we named earlier, Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy, why are they coming to life? So what is the, the sort of the backstory? What is the deal? Yeah. In Five Nights at Freddy's 1, there are hidden Easter eggs that tell a story about a murder that happened at this restaurant mm-hmm. in, involving five kids. We see through mini games within Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and 2, and even a little bit in 3, that someone who had was a higher up in this company named William Afton, he was also called the purple guy on the internet for a while because he was depicted as 
being purple with a security badge. He was the suspect in a murder for these five kids, and there were rumors that the kids' bodies were never found. And so it is kind of leaning you in the direction of the kids' bodies were put into these metal suits for the animatronics. So it's believed that the kids' souls in some way have possessed the animatronics or perhaps the endoskeleton inside. And so their goal is to kill everyone or...? Not entirely. The thing is that if you look at it through the lens of the lore have knowing more than just what we knew at the time of the first game, it's believed that the character we play as in Five Nights at Freddy's 1 is Michael Afton, the son of William Afton, who shares a wild resemblance to his father. Mm -hmm. And so the animatronics, or the souls inside, whether or not you want to look at it, either way, see you and they believe that you are William, your father, and so they wish to take revenge. Okay. And they see sort of like every adult this way? Do they go after children? No. It's explicitly not in the first game, but in the second game, it's explicitly said that the animatronics are completely fine around kids, but they kind of give a death glare or side eye to adults. So are we excited about this movie? Yes. Mm -hmm. You've been been anticipating it? Oh, yes. What are you expecting from it? Are you expecting to be blown away or disappointed? Or uh, what's, what's your thought? Well, being with Blumhouse and knowing their reputation for movies and how well they can work with even a smaller budget compared to other studios, I have hope that it will be made well. Mm -hmm. And I'm aware, or at least I've been made aware, that Scott in some way has been an influence on the direction of the movie more than other people probably would have been had this been their game franchise. And so I think that the studio is competent enough to make a good quality movie with Scott's help to make it true to the franchise in a way that is both satisfying for people like myself and my mother who know a significant amount about the games and the story that it's trying to tell, as well as people like Sean, who know little to nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm thinking is uh, we're going to play a promo for another podcast right here on the ESO Network, and when we come back, we'll have our reaction to the movie, but first, in real life, we're going to go eat and then go to the movie and see it. Yes, definitely. But the listeners will just hear this promo, Okay. and then our reactions right after this. Very exciting. People keep asking, are we back? Yeah, I guess we're back. Back to talk about cigars, movies, TV shows, and any other nerdy topics here on the Cigar Nerds Podcast. Check us out on CigarNerdPodcast.com and ESONetwork.com. And we have a YouTube channel, at Cigar Nerd Podcast, where we do cigar reviews, live versions of the show, and any other dumb thing we think to record. All right, and we're back. We just got home from the movies. What did you guys think? Well, first of all, I would like to know what you think as as the person who knows the least amount of the history and everything and has not watched a whole lot. And then I think I should go because I know le- I know a little bit more than you, but not as much as Wyatt. And then let's go to him. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, I enjoy it. It, uh, it. it went, it was almost a two hour movie, but it went by really fast. Uh-huh. I recognized a lot of scenes from the YouTube clips and all the uh, trailers, mm-hmm. but it it it, uh, it filled in all the details of what exactly the timeline was of everything because that was never clear from what I had seen up until now. Really? Uh, so that was good. The acting was good. Um, the the audience in the theater was uh, it was packed yeah. and people cheered and they clapped yeah. and. It was like a genuine movie-going experience. Most times when you're at the theater, that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. But this this was a full interactive experience. And uh, for not knowing anything about it, I say I enjoyed it. Good. I, I'm happy to hear that. 
for me, as somebody who sort of experienced it, um, you know, outside of my son's eyes, who, you know, is very much so interested in the, the game, he played it a lot, that type of thing. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. I found the experience good, even though the chairs are very, very uncomfortable yes. in our theater. Um, but that's not the movie's fault. That's the theater's fault. The jump scares got you because I kept feeling you jump in your seat. Yeah, some of the jump scares were actually really good. I didn't find that we had as many jump scares as I expected, considering the games and what I know about them. But at the same time, I... I thoroughly did enjoy them. Uh, there was a little bit of cheese, you know, with the uh, with the cupcake, and and he kind of attacks people. It's it, but it was a fun cheesiness. It was uh, it was definitely enjoyable. Um, the characters are very relatable. It was definitely not what I expected, but at the same time, I enjoyed it. I really did. I enjoyed it, and I'm not much. It really wasn't scary. I didn't find it scary. I found it fun, surprising, and... It wasn't super bloody. No, and no. Th there was a lot of kids there. Yes. Yeah. Because it, it... Don't forget, the kids that grew up um, on this game probably are still under the age of 12 right now. Okay. I don't know what it was rated I either. Guess. Mm -hmm. what, did, yeah. what did you think? I thought it was good. A lot. Like... The book franchise, in comparison to the game franchise, it took bits and pieces from the games and what Scott was trying to tell and puts them together in a way that gives us an idea of what he was going for and not necessarily a flat-out answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was little clues here and there. I would have to say somebody should pay particular attention to the opening credits. Yeah. Um, you, you find out a lot. All by itself there in the opening credits. And the story just flows. It actually flows very well. You don't get too caught up in character development. I think it was a very good intro to a trilogy, if you ask me. I can tell it's it's an intro to a trilogy. It's got that sort of not fully character development, but you, you get an idea of who the characters are. Lots of room for growth. Yeah, yeah. And, their, and their motivation behind what they're doing. But yeah, no, you don't, uh, you don't get the full full context yet and for you was it uh, better or worse than you expected i would say it was about par i had high hopes coming into it because i've watched rather closely how scott has worked with the games and the movies or not the movies the books i know that blumhouse had, is well respected and i've seen a few blumhouse mu movies so so you weren't disappointed no so something for you and I, Sean, to sort of touch on, the animatronics were made by the Jim Henson's puppeteering company. Right. Um, we grew up on them. The Muppets and all that stuff. The Muppets, Fraggle, Fraggle Rock, Rock. That's it. Uh, these were were staples in, in our growing up. And anybody who maybe has watched Labyrinth, for instance, um, it's become quite popular again since the uh, passing of David Bowie. But, you know... What did you think of the animatronics and how they looked and, and moved? Well, anybody who knows me and uh, my history with the Rusted Robot podcast knows I do love my robots. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they were good. Good, good. Um, Wyatt, what did you think of the the animatronics? I thought that they told, like, they were how the animatronics looked the way that they were described and looked in the games, and I know that not the entire throughout the entire movie was it people in the suits or strictly animatronics. And I found that when in the scenes where it was a person in the suit, it didn't feel like it was a person in a suit. It still felt like it was an animatronic. They moved very robotically. Yeah, and like stiff, and mm -hmm. but not stiff to the point where it's exaggerated. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think that I think it was great. A question for you, Wyatt: the animatronic that they tried to turn Abby into was supposed to be, I think, Baby. From what I understand, the character Baby or the animatronic oh, Baby. Uh, what did you think of how she, that animatronic looked? I would have to disagree that it was baby uh, i recognized that it was a clown or a jester of some kind but it didn't look like baby 
Okay. You and I, uh, Sean, we don't, we're not really up on the YouTube scene or who's popular with gaming YouTubers, but Wyatt knows a lot of the yeah. YouTubers and uh, there was some, some appearances. Cameos. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, can you tell it some a surprise? And we're not going to tell you tell them who. Uh, I think they should go and see the movie and be as surprised as we were. Yeah. But uh, there was a, a waiter who yes. uh, somebody uh, who even I recognized, and uh, I was very shocked to see him. But I can say that uh, that was a surprise. It seemed like for the whole theater. Yeah, oh, there yeah. was a huge reaction. There was, there was for sure. Yeah, and some pretty well known that they were in the in the movie already they were in a lot of the trailers uh yeah. and they've released a, a lot of their footage already so i think it's safe for us to say who uh, else made an appearance so who who else were the the ones who made an appearance wyatt well the taxi driver was Corey kenshin mm -hmm. there was a poster with employees of the month and a few youtubers including Daco. 8-Bit Ryan, Bazam Alam, and DJ Sturf all made appearances on this board. Excellent. Excellent. And, uh, of course, like I said, uh, go watch the movie. Pay particular attention to the scene where uh, there are some characters in the diner. It's rather early on, uh, and you will be pleasantly surprised who you see there. Yeah. There's one thing that I wanted to ask Wyatt, because um, it, it is a possible trilogy, and I, I think it will get to the point where it's going to at least get a number two. What do, what do you think, Sean? Do you think it'll get a second? Movie? Well, they, they definitely left it open to that. Mm -hmm. And judging on the uh, amount of people in the theater on the Thursday preview night, I would say yes. Yeah. It okay. looks like it's going to be a financial success. Yeah, good. Good. Yep. Before, what do you think, Wyatt? I agree that the even on the preview night was very packed. I'm sure it will be full on the other nights as well and i'm sure tomorrow when it comes out on peacock i'm almost certain that there will be plenty of people who watch it on there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what do you give it out of a 10 nine nine out of ten all right excellent yeah i give it a nine too i think it was really really good um what about you yeah I, I, eight or nine sure yeah. the main characters that that we saw um matthew lillard and josh hutchinson Hutcher i was gonna Hutcherson. Hutcherson. i was gonna call him mike <laughs> well that's his character that's the character uh i've seen hunger games did you see the hunger games a long time ago but i, I recently watched josh in uh, the tv series future man okay all right so uh, matthew lillard really he's known for shaggy uh -huh. um but also uh scream he was in screen. True. What did you think of his portrayal? Uh, he's an old man now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What did you think of his acting? Uh, better than it used to be. Yeah? He, he, he was a little bit more serious. He wasn't his regular uh, drugged out self. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wyatt, what did you think? Was he who you thought William Afton would be? He no. said it he's, quite yeah. a few times. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we should wrap this podcast up. Unless there's anything else you want to... Well, yeah, I have more questions. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. Wyatt, we... Mm -hmm. It was announced, Markiplier announced that he was not going to be on in it. Yeah. Uh, were you surprised that he wasn't, he, you know, of the outcome of that, or... No, I know he was, and still is, I presume, working on his own projects, mm -hmm. and he has said that he would absolutely love to be in a FNAF movie, whether or not it's a second one or this one. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, things just didn't work out timeline-wise as he has his own projects. And I'm pretty much certain that if given the opportunity and timelines were better for him, he would make some time to squeeze in, even if it's just for a few seconds or something. Do you think uh, if they do a, two, a number two, he might uh, make an appearance there? Uh, if he's not busy doing something else that he can't sneak away from for a little while. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you... Th so at the end of the th of the movie, you uh, were talking to me about the first game. Yeah. Without sort of spoiling um, 
the ending or somewhat close to the ending of the movie, uh, there was a scene uh, where you noticed something and you think it's going to explain the kitchen scene? Excuse me, yes. In the movie, there's a certain thing that happens and this thing happens in the kitchen to a certain degree. In the first game, there's one camera that doesn't work when you go to that camera you can hear audio but you just see like static tv static Mm -hmm. and i was seeing this thing happen in the kitchen made me think i wonder if this is scott or steel wool studios but i imagine scott i don't think steel wool actually had any part in the movie scott trying to tell the audience, the fans, because he is very good at talking to the fans. Maybe not directly, but with hints and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if Scott was trying to hint that this thing that we saw happen in the kitchen in the movie is what is taking place or what has taken place in the kitchen in the game or whether or not they just had it happen there because the place that this thing happens doesn't really matter. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, any listeners out there who has an idea of what Wyatt is talking about, maybe they could email the Soul Forge podcast or ask a question on our Facebook page. Yeah, that's right. Soul or Forge, comment. Soul Forge podcast at gmail.com. Absolutely. Or comment. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to all your responses. Yeah. Um, So all in all, a from a sort of newbie perspective, you enjoyed the movie. Yes. Um, From a somewhat knowing mid level mid level uh, about it, uh, I very much enjoyed it, and I am looking forward to the second one. And it seems our expert on the Five Nights franchise uh, approves as well. Good. Yes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, listeners, hope you enjoyed that uh, review of the Five Nights at Freddy's film Uh, until next time we'll uh say can you survive five nights at freddy's that's the question isn't it yeah that's right so thanks again for listening and don't forget to leave a five-star review in the podcatcher of your choice thank you for listening to another episode of the soul forge podcast your support is greatly appreciated and we hope you'll tune in again next time remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links And don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge Podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.